Today we're doing an install of our front mount oil cooler on a mini with a front mount intercooler. We've had a lot of questions about this. Also the video will cover how to install an oil cooler on a mini without a front mount intercooler. The difference is the oil cooler on the front mount cars goes on the top. The oil cooler without the front mount goes on the bottom. That's the only difference. So we've gone ahead and got the bumper mostly taken off. So we're not going to cover that today. You just pull the bumper. Once you get the bumper off, you can see this one has a uh, helix front mount on it. It basically goes where the our front mount inner, our radiator would go. So what you do is you take the uh, oil cooler and it fits very nicely right down in here. And you want to pull it up so that most of it is exposed. And then I'll show you how to put the clips through it and everything in just a second. I've gone ahead and loosened up the bumper, loosened up the radiator, taken the front mount intercooler off so that everything's loose for the video so it moves along a little quicker. The next thing you need to do is you need to take your cooler and you need to fit it in here so you can see where it's going to be. Now you want it to be as close to the top of the condenser as possible. And then what I do is I hold it up here. You can get somebody to help you if you need to. And I make a Sharpie mark about where the, uh, the zip tie push lock is going to come through. So I just mark that guy so I kind of have an idea once I take the bumper off where my cooler is going to go. So then I take the cooler back out. Take the bumper off. And then you've got a set of push ties in your box. And they've got um, push ties and they've got some clips and uh, all sorts of stuff in here. So the little rubber guys, these little guys, these guys go in between the radiator and the condenser. That's the oil radiator and the condenser. Then these guys go on the end to hold it all together. So we're going to take our push clips, these guys, we're going to push them through so that we can put the radiator on it and we'll be able to mount the second set. Now, you all right, so I've taken the, uh, these little radiator condenser clips off and you just set those to the side. That way you can get the condenser out away from the radiator, kind of push it through, push this side through, kind of get it a little bit like so you have, but you don't want to push too hard. Don't force it. You just want to kind of work it through so that you've got a hole in the fins. You can see you've got just a slight little clip. Hole. This is the clip we send now. It has a big fat end on it so it doesn't pull through the condenser. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull the condenser out. You don't need to take it off. You just need to move it forward a little bit. Then you can fish it through the hole you just made. See, so if you make that hole in the front, it makes it a lot easier to find the second time. So then you want to push this one through. All right. Get them through. Now you want to put your condenser back in its mount because we're going to put the cooler on it and get it located for the other two holes. Obviously, this can take a second. You just kind of got to be patient. All right, so now the reason I didn't put the little, little rubber pieces on it is because I'm merely trying to get a location for the other side, for the other two ties. Now you want to basically line this tie up, the other side, straight above it. You'll be able to see it. Kind of give it a little wiggle. Pop your condenser back out. You don't want to push these into the radiator. You want to make sure they don't hit the radiator. All right. Now we've got our clips in. We're good there. 
Gonna put our radiator back into its spot. Gonna drop on our connectors. And you don't need to take the tape off. This is just to make them sticky if you wanna stick them on something, but I don't recommend sticking them to the condenser core. All right, now we got our core. Got it mounted on there good. All right, so now we need to verify that the bumper still fits. She fits. Check to make sure everything's nice and snug. This is a good, so right now, if you want to get, you want to make sure that you can pull the cooler and it's going to tighten up and the bumper is going to be able to fit flush up and it's not squashing everything. It's going to be tight. It's going to be really tight, but everything in a mini is. So that looks good. That's going to be fine. So we're going to pull this guy off. All you do is you take these guys. These are just little one way deals. Slide them down, tighten them up. Give it a little snip. Just cut them all flush. Give the cooler a little tug. Make sure you're you're good. And she's installed. Okay, so we've got the radiator pulled off. We've got the condenser and the oil radiator. And you need to support this with something. Bungee cord works pretty good. Tie strap, whatever. So now we can access the oil cooler unit back here behind the fan. You can take off the whole front end to get to it, but it's quicker if you just go through the fan. You may have to move some of the, the coolant hoses here and just kind of finagle it, but it'll come out. Now we're, we took all the bolts out of the uh, oil cooler plate. Now the way, the easiest way to do it is get you a long flathead, come up through here, and then you can get behind the plate and just you just twist the screwdriver. Just give it a little twist. Some oil's gonna come out and some water's gonna come out. That's okay. And then you can take the plate and then I just let it fall in the container. All right, so you wanna retain these little gaskets. These guys are important. So you wanna be careful with them. Just squeeze them off. They'll just they'll come right off. All right, so we're gonna put this down over here. All right, now you notice that, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's two other gaskets, three other gaskets in here that are still stuck to the, uh, in, in their little retention grooves. So we're just gonna wanna clean them up a little bit and then, and then go ahead and we'll be ready to put the plate on. All right, so now we've got it kind of wiped off, so we're gonna hit it with some brake clean. It's okay if it goes in the hole, it's not gonna hurt anything. You can also spray, pull the hoses back, kind of spray down in there and clean up anything. Also, you wanna look for leaks that um, you could have had, you know, to make sure that your gaskets are good and that kind of thing. And then you want to make sure that the gaskets are also, don't have any rips, tears, anything like that in them. What you want to do is get you a little RTV on your finger. Then you want to reach through, you want to RTV gaskets. Okay, you do not need a lot of RTV on this. This is. Just a little bit goes a really long ways. And try to be careful and not get it into the hole. Just, you're just trying to make, just hedging your bed a little bit here. And uh, reduce leaks. You don't need a All right, now we got our plate. Make sure your plate is clean. You know, if you've set it in the floor or something, you wanna make sure it's clean. It's free of debris. All that sort of stuff. This looks good. Other thing you want to verify before you install this is that, is that these are tight. So we're going to do that. Verify that they're tight. They were. We try to ship them tight, but always check. So 
you're gonna put the plate up through the bottom. It's gonna be just a little bit, kind of a, a bit of a bear to get in there. All right, and it'll seat on here because it's cut exactly the same as the other plate. A little tech tip here is to put in the bolt that goes behind the little water pump into the plate before you put the plate up. That way you can get the bolt in. Otherwise, you gotta take the water pump off. We've, uh, we've got the plate installed. As you can see, you run this one water line through the crossover pipe for the water. Then you run the oil fittings straight down and then they're gonna run out and around the side. You need to kind of be mindful of where they're at right now, but it's not that important. Now we're gonna put the radiator back in, put the intercooler back on, route the lines up to it. So we've got the radiator, condenser, oil cooler back on. You need to, when you run these lines through, you wanna run them right through this hole in the bumper, bring them up, cut them to length, put your fittings on, tighten them up. Remember, all of this is aluminum, doesn't need to be super tight. Then fit your bumper up. We'll put the front mount on. We'll get it all together. We'll turn it on before we put the bumper on. Check it for leaks. All right, so we've got the uh, oil cooler on, front mounts back on, condenser, everything's put back together. And uh, we're gonna fire it up, check it for leaks, and make sure everything's cool. And then we'll finish putting the bumper on and uh, she'll be ready to roll. All right, fire it up. So once you get the bumper back on, you're gonna to wanna to zip tie up the radiator hose and the, uh, the oil cooler lines. You can just tie them all together, use the factory mounts, and you're good to go. Just finish putting it up, check your oil level, and take it for a test drive. The last step in putting the oil cooler on is putting the top grill back on. The only modification you have to do is you kinda of have to cut off these two tabs so that it'll slip back in there. You just gotta trim the tabs off. You can use just a regular pair of dikes and trim them down. And then you want, you don't wanna cut any more than you have to, but you wanna cut as much as you need. And then you just wanna test fit it until you get it right, then bolt in the top and you're done.